Taylor and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner. I'm Alan Waddell and as you can see, uh, Coach Jay Ladner is not with me right this moment as due to some scheduling conflicts that his team is actually on the road taking on the Gonzaga Bulldogs, a team that's ranked as high as number six in the country. So we're going to do the show a little bit different this week. But first of all, the Lions were in action right here at the University Center against Tennessee Tech. Let's check out those highlights. Tennessee Tech, three ball far corner, that one good by Fillmore. Fillmore hits a three, that is uh, for the year. Fillmore's eighth trade. He'll look, hand it off to Greaves. Greaves double team. Ups and down low. Upson's going to power it in off the glance. That one good, we're tied at five. Upson on Monday night had 16. Tech driving in, a little shot off the mark. No good. Jackson on the rebound. Laid it up and in. Guillory to Greaves on the left side. Greaves, had thoughts of a three. Gives it in the middle to Jackson. Zay dribbles to Fillmore. Fillmore sets up, three ball here. Good, his second one. Ninth of the year, eight, seven. Upson, being double teamed to Greaves. Greaves straight away for three, yes. Daniels got his first three of the year. Third three of the, of the half here. Four to Jenkins. Jenkins going to drive middle of the paint, kicking out to Jackson. Zay left alone. He'll launch a three. That one's good. Jackson has just hit his ninth three of the year. That's the fourth tray for the Lions here. Holds it down around his waist. Backdoor cut to Moore. Moore off the glass. Split the double team. Laid it up and in. Lions looking to tie with the deuce here. Zay trying to beat everybody down the floor. Off balance. Layup in and good. 21-21. Jackson scored the last four for the Lions and we're tied. As he drives baseline, shelves it off to Upson. Upson off and counted and the foul. Nice move by Upson. Made a nice move a while ago. Guarded by Greaves. Lions man to man. Moore inside the top to Rowe. Rowe launches a three ball. Good. Hit it. It's a nine point. Three point Tennessee nine. Tech lead. 32 23. Eight. Gillery left wing is going to drive baseline. Crash into a uh, Jackson. Got the shot to fall. No call one way or the other. Gillery knocked Jackson down. The drive middle of the paint. Off balance layup. No good. Greaves got the rebound. He's pushed. No call, but got it off the glass to fall. 41 32. Bucket for Greaves. Around Jokovic, 16 footer. Good. Hit the back of the rim. Kick back in. Fell in only a two. They have a 14 point lead here at the half. 48. 34. Pull the top Jackson. Zay's going to drive middle of the paint. Off balance. Scoop shot on the way. That one good. Got it to roll off the rim. 11 points for Zay Jackson. 48 36. Torque across the way. Hillary thought about a three shot clock at two. Fillmore long three. Yes. Way downtown. About a 30 footer. That ought to be worth four. Up top, Fillmore. Fillmore. Trying to get a screen from Greaves. We'll get it to him. We'll give it back. Fillmore, another three here. Good. Back to back threes for Fillmore. It's a two point game, a 10 point game now. 52 42. Backing in on Upson, taken away by Jenkins. Jenkins reaches in and gets it. Jenkins going to try to take it coast to coast. Upson on the miss. Lays it up and in. It's a nine point check lead. Bounce pass, backdoor cut. Fillmore. Back to Jenkins. Jenkins for three. Yes. Through the, kind of, through the uh, defense, Jenkins was wide open, and it knocked away by Upson. Picked up by Fillmore. Across the way to Jackson. Jackson back to Fillmore. Fillmore let it up and in. Lions back to within six. 58-52. Rebound to Jenkins. Down the floor to Jackson. Jackson in on Jokovic. He'll lay it up and in. Lions to within two. 58-56. Nice move by Jackson. He's got 13. Caldwell powers it in. No good. Rebound ups to Fillmore. Fillmore looking. Trying to take it to coast to coast. Going to lay it up. We're tied. 58-58. Jackson up top. Going to drive. Give it off to Greaves. Greaves double team. Hit fake. Can't shoot. Back to Jenkins. Jenkins for three. Off the mark. No good. Rebound ups it. Ups it to Jackson. Wide open. Lay up and in. 62-61. Motion weave out in the front. Three ball far. Corner good. Fillmore again. 65-61. Four point. Lion lead. 8.30 left. 
left to go tonight. Back out, up top to Fillmore. Fillmore working. Guarded by Rowe. Fillmore's going to split it. Alley-oop and off the glass. Good to Upson. Didn't get to slam. He made sure he laid it up and in. He's going to try to drive in the middle of the paint. He's going to turn. Hand off Upson. Upson won't, uh, can't shoot. Driving in on Jackson. Hook shot up over the top of Jackson. Good. 69-64. Jackson's going to put it on the floor. Out to Fillmore. Fillmore long three. Yes! He hit one from about 25. Oh, baby, he's shooting lights out here and hamming on this Wednesday night. Paint. He's going to take it, kick it out to Jenkins. Jenkins to Jackson. Jackson for three. Yes! He nailed it from 18. 75-64. Lions by 11. We go under four. On the right side. Going to drive. Penetrate. Can't shoot, but he'll give it to Upson. Upson hook shot. Up and in. Upson's got 12. Unbelievable second half for Southeastern as they come roaring back to knock off Tennessee Tech. And it's the first victory for Coach Jay Ladner right here at Southeastern. So let's go and check in with Coach Jay Ladner and also Devontae Upson. It started, uh, it started in the uh, locker room at halftime. You know, we was down on ourselves. Coach had to put a little bit of inspiration in us. We knew we could get this one. Uh, we just knew we had to pick up the energy and uh, get that teamwork in. It came all together. We didn't want to lose this one. This, we had to fight for this one. We really wanted this one. So we came out, fought hard, and got the W. I didn't, uh, to be honest with you, there was no X and O's or anything like that, any tactical changes. Their personnel didn't change. Our personnel didn't change. Tactically, neither team changed the way they were playing. You know, we, we would continue to play man-to-man -man defense. They continue to mix up man-to-man -man and zone. Uh, it was the same people. What changed was inside of our, our players. And um, so I want to give our players credit for that. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. I was not pleased at all, to, to be very honest with you, how we played the first half. In fact, I was embarrassed in the way we play, and, and certainly I have to be responsible for that. But I'm very pleased, that, to their credit, the way they bounce back the second half uh, and give all the credit to them because they did it. And uh, a very exciting second half. And in my 24 years of coaching, I've never been involved in a team that turned the game around in a 35-point margin. So hopefully, hopefully we can build on that. Big win for Southeastern, and again, the first win for Coach Jay Ladner in the Jay Ladner area here at Southeastern. Two days later, the Lions were in the Green Wave Classic down at Tulane as they took on the host, the Tulane Green Wave. Here's the highlights. City of New Orleans, historic Devlin Fieldhouse. Tonight, the Southeastern Louisiana Lions come in with a record of one and four, take on the three and one Tulane Green Wave. Daniel Greaves works it over now for Upson. There is a three ball. This team loves shooting the threes. And Joshua Fillmore from downtown hits his first of the day. Smith with the rebound. No, here comes Southeastern running it up the floor. Zay Jackson for three. Bangs it home. 6-0 Southeastern. There's another three attempt. Hook was back out there to make sure it didn't happen. Wow. Devontae Upson slams it home. 10 pounds. He has that ability to use his size and go through people. That was quite the glide into the paint. And Andrew Guillory, the junior out of Fort Worth, Texas, lays it in. It's a kid that transferred over from junior college. Coach Conroy wants a quick timeout. And that's where I think the difference in this basketball game will have to be displayed as you see a Jackson. nice steal. <laughs> and Zay Jackson getting out on the defensive end as well as offensively. Back at top key, three ball from beyond the arc, Joshua Fillmore. We're back tied again at 17. Work ethic, which is one of the reasons why he's so successful. There's Ooh. a big three. Fillmore from downtown. Mack works it around. First sign of zone now by the Lions. Dabney from three. Man, is he hot. Averaging 12 points a game. Working it around here for Jackson. And now Cedric Jenkins Ooh. picks it home. And that's a kid that missed all of last year due to injury. National championship season a year ago. Jones County Junior College Ooh. up near Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Tim, that's the first sign we've seen in two lanes to try to get into the legs of southeastern Louisiana. The second half, so <laughs> that 
that was on fire. That was on their home floor back on Wednesday night. Line to the floor. Wow, that's a nice move by Zay Jackson. Candidly, this is a team that has a plethora of guards who can truly score at any time they want to. Out on the post. Nice move there by Guillory, who lays it up and in. Baseline, strong to the nice. goal, and he lays it in. All of that boiled down from the shot fake allowed him to explode to the basket. Meets the eye. He's sneaky athletic. Nice look there. Ups it, puts it in. The numbers would look like. Nice move there, and Devontae ups it. Puts it in. Tulane's largest lead of the night. It's 11. Fillmore puts it in. There it is again. Efficient. Jackson. Beautiful. Nice. And a timeout. Good defense here in the second half by two lanes. That is good by Fillmore. And Fillmore's got 13 on the night. For those big guys, both Dry and Osikowski, I'm sorry, Dry and Hensley to take it out. And what a finish by Upson. Wow. Devontae De Upson with an explanation point there. Well, I love the battle by the Southeastern Louisiana Lions. I thought they came in. Had a very good first half, just got worn out in the second half. Tough loss for Southeastern in a game that came all the way down to the final minutes of the second half. Let's hear Coach Jay Ladner's thoughts on the game. Uh, I really thought that our, our game uh, against Tulane uh, was up to this point the best game that we had played all year. Quality opponent in their home gym, kind of a little bit of a, you know, there was a little, little, little uh, rivalry there among the two schools. So, um, you know, we were excited about coming over here to play. It sounded about the opportunity to play Tulane. They've got an outstanding team. They're a very well coached team. Uh, do a lot of really nice things offensively. And I thought our guys rose to the occasion. We got off to a very quick start. Uh, shot the basketball well. In the end, our, 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 our depth issue and our, our size issue because oh my, Tulane was extremely big. Uh, they're subbing six tens with six tens and so forth. Hard force to match up, but in the end, they, they, they prevail in a hard fault contest. We've had a number of opportunities already this year because of the quality of our schedule to have been on national TV. The fact that we're able to be on there again, that that's a great selling point to recruits. They know if they come to Southeastern, one, they're going to get an opportunity to play one of the best schedules in the country. Uh, and secondly, they're going to get an opportunity to, to play on national TV and get national exposure. We tell our recruits, all your dreams can come true right there in Hammond. We've got a great arena. We've got a great academic uh, settings. Uh, Southeastern doesn't have to take a back seat to anybody in terms of academics. And now our basketball program can offer you national exposure. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have more highlights right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern basketball. Hey, Lion fans, I'm Southeastern head basketball coach Jay Ladd. Join us as we usher in a new era of Lion basketball. For more information on season tickets, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LINE. Always remember, line up. 
Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. The Lions then returned to action a couple of days later as they took on Langston in the Green Wave Classic. Here's the highlights with the voice of Southeastern Basketball. On this team, here's uh, one Jones drives and the shot blocked by Hudson. He got it put back up and in. That's Curtis Jones and Langston leads 2-0, 30 seconds gone by. Jenkins slams to basketball. Greaves pulls up, 15-footer, back of the rim. That's no good. Jenkins got the rebound on the putback. That one's good and we're tied at two. Jenkins with the bucket, minute gone by, 2-2. Crossover dribble at the uh, center circle. Free throw line, middle of the paint drive, off the glass, that one good, a bucket by Gray. Langston up 4-2, minute and a half gone by. Guillory right side, Phil Moore up top, Greaves gonna drive, kick it out, Jenkins, Sigdrick 4-3, front of the rim, that one's no good, and then by Langston on the putback, that one bounces around and falls in, and Langston's up 6-2. So Graves got two, Jenkins inbounds it underneath, gets it into Graves, and Graves powers it up and in. Bell Jones, free throw line, trying to drive on Graves, shot on the way, that one rolls around and in. Tough shot, got it to go. Hillary's gonna take a drive in, shot off the glass, good, he got hammered, no call. 15-8. Fillmore down low to Ochi, Ochi with a slam dunk. We got a one point ball game right now, 15-14. This little run by Southeastern, triggered by the defense. Dixon picks it up underneath to Ochi. Ochi head fake, that one laid up and in. Ochi's got four. 19-16 Langston to the near side. Shovels it off Fillmore. Fillmore for three, thank you very much. Joshua shooting lights out, 19-19. they halfway through, half number one. Jackson's gonna drive, he'll lay it up and in. It's 22-21, Langston by a point. Maggio steps in, gets a steal. He's gonna drive, stop, bounce it to Ochi. Ochi will lay it up, the Lions have taken a lead. 23-22, timeout Langston. And it's all been triggered by the Lion defense. In the bucket, Maggio for three, near corner, that's Dillon's three ball. It's 26-24, Southeastern. Brian Jenkins, who's back in. Left side, they'll go to Ochi. Ochi driving in, will lay it up and score. Stan Hull wanted a travel call, 28-27. Jenkins skips it across to Fillmore. Fillmore pull up, 15-footer, good. Joshua has tied it up, 30-30. Jones, a little one-on-one, -on -one, pull up jumper and hits it from about 15 over the top of up line to Fillmore, to Jackson, Zay wide open for three on the way here. In and out, no good, Greaves the rebound, stick back. That one's no good, Guillory on the put back on the back side, got it up and in. Left wing, back to Jackson, Zay wide open for three, yes. Jackson with a three, straight away, 39-37. That three ball fired by Green. Jackson down to Guillory. He's going to drive baseline off the glass. Good count it in the foul. Finally got one of those. Just kind of taking it upon himself to try to make something happen. Hit the free throw. The six games in 11 days. This is game number five. He's had his man blocked out. Daniel looking to run. He'll pick up his dribble, backdoor cut, Jackson. Jackson lays it up, backdoor in. Lions by six, 46, 40, 45 seconds to go. So Ochi's gonna shoot. Free throw on the way, and that one is good. He'll have another. A two shot foul, so the shot to the blow to Ochi's uh, head is what the officials are. Officially calling that, so Ochi gets a couple of free throws. He hits them like at 15 as Guillory. Turned away by Matamba, gives it to Greaves. Greaves sets up for three, good. Greaves has a three ball. Lions by three, 53-43. Langston wants a timeout. Bert. Lions are right to left here in the second half. Guillory hands off Jackson. Zay to the free throw line, will spin back to Greaves. Greaves, who hit his second tray a while ago, has a jumper from the free throw line here. Daniel heating it up from the field. Lions by 12, 55-43. Zay up top, up top Greaves. Greaves down low to Upson. Upson will lay it up again. Nice entry pass by Greaves. Great hands by Upson, who lost it for a minute, picked it back up and laid it in. As he'll work it, Jackson steps in front, he's got a steal, he got a three on one. Jackson back behind 
screen the back pass to Fillmore, who will lay it up and in. And it's 68-61. On two, Fillmore, middle of the paint, bounces it to Guillory. Guillory drives, off balance, layup up and in. Guillory's got another bucket. Lions are on top by a left to Fillmore on the wing. Fillmore back around up top. Back to Greaves. Greaves. Launches a long jumper, hit it, three ball grease. They left him alone, he knocked it out. 77-66, Jackson. On the floor with it a couple of times, back to Greaves. Down low to Upson. Upson turning, spinning, shooting, scoring. Off the glass, 79-68, Upson's got four. Center circle, Jackson's got it. Jackson, turn around, 12 footer, good. Turn around jumper, they left him alone and he made him pay for it. 83-72. Fillmore starts his move, top of the key, middle of the paint, jumper on the way. Here, good, he hit another one. He's got 25, and the lead is 15, 91-76. Big win for Southeastern as they won on the road at Devlin Fieldhouse against Langston. Let's go back out and hear from Coach Jay Ladner, also Josh Fillmore, and Daniel Grievous. Uh, it's an odd time to play. We actually played at 10.50 this morning. Um, change of routine and so forth that we're normally used to. That's okay. We actually said, hey, if you're going to play in the NCAA tournament, sometimes you got to play it, you know, the early, early game. So that may help us there. But what was what's really tough on us, where I felt like we were a little bit out of gas, that was our sixth game in 11 days. Most of them have been on the road, all but one. Um, we've done a lot of traveling, a lot of miles, and that takes its toll on a basketball team. And uh, so anyway, that's that's what we felt like right there is, is I, I, I felt like our guys played hard, didn't feel like that. We we were as emotionally charged as we've been. Yeah, we were down, so we had to we had to get back to the bases. We had to start guarding, getting stopped, and running the offense executed. I was trying to be aggressive from the beginning, and then when, uh, I got a lot of free throws. That got me into a rhythm, so that made it a lot easier. The best start getting bigger and bigger, so I was making some shots. You know, I started off really slow, um, both offensively and defensively. You know, early morning, um, you know, it took a while to get going, but my teammates, you know, they had my back and they kept telling me to keep being aggressive and, you know, keep keep shooting and, and not phase myself out. So, um, you know, I just tried to stay involved and I tried to help out the team and, um, you know, just kind of go from there. So once again, congratulations as the Lions pick up their second victory of the season here as it's very early in the 2014-2015 season. Let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll have more right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern basketball. Hey Lion fans, I'm Southeastern head basketball coach Jay Ladd. Join us as we usher in a new era of Lion basketball. For more information on season tickets, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LINE. Always remember, line up. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. A couple of weeks ago, we met Coach Errol Goff and also Coach Kyle Rohn, two of the Lion assistant coaches. This week, we meet Tyson Waterman. Former Winthrop great Tyson Waterman joined the men's basketball staff at Southeastern Louisiana for the 2014-15 season. Waterman joined Errol Goff and Kyle Rohn along with volunteer Mark Beeson on the staff. My role is to uh, do a lot with the skill development and uh, mainly you know, go out and recruit some of the best players that we can get to come play for us at Southeast Louisiana. Waterman served as the head boys basketball coach of Believe Prep Academy in Rock Hill, South Carolina from 2010 to 2014. 
before coming to Hammond. And while Waterman's experience on the court pays dividends for the Lions, it's his hard work on the recruiting trail that helps Southeastern the most. Um, one of the biggest things is uh, really I try to be as real as I can be. Um, and one of, one of the things about, you know, the opportunity to, first of all, have a, a full scholarship where you're going to be able to attend a beautiful university like Southeastern and your kid is going to be on a team that's going to compete and we're going to be there to help assist him in any way we can through the duration of his career. Waterman played at Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina from 1996 to 2000 and led the Eagles to the NCAA tournament twice. He ranks fourth on the Winthrop all-time scoring list and is in the Winthrop Hall of Fame. I wanted the ball. <laughs> you know, I wanted the ball last 10 seconds of the shot clock. I was going to make a play. Um, and, I, and I was a kid, I, I was a player that had a strong will to win, you know. So at any cost, I was going to try to win the game if it was going to have to be won by me. When Waterman arrived at Southeastern this past summer, he was delighted to see that on December the 19th, the Winthrop Eagles would be traveling to Hammond to play the Lions. But just because Waterman is in the Winthrop Hall of Fame, he still wants to hand the Eagles a loss at the University Center. Well, being a Lion, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity here. And it's unfortunate, but we just going to have to do what we have to do in this situation. For now, Waterman will keep teaching basketball, recruiting new Lions, and perfect his craft of becoming one of the best college coaches in the game. All right, you just saw the story on Coach Tyson Waterman. We're now going to hear from Coach Jay Ladner and his thoughts on his assistant coach. What I like about Coach Waterman, I really love our, our staff. I feel very blessed to have those three gentlemen working on our staff. They're, first of all, are good people. They are good people that represent southeastern Louisiana and our community in, in, in such a high class way. The second thing, I, or, or talking about Coach Waterman in particular, besides a player that's played professionally, he, he's a player that, that that players that we recruit that may have aspirations play, play professionally in Europe, they, he can give them some insight on how that goes and what it takes to get there. He was the all-time leading scorer at Winthrop University, uh, played for Coach Greg Marshall, who's now the head coach at Wichita State, one of our nation's powers. And but what he brings, he, he's one of the, and you'll quickly see this, he's one of the nation's best recruiters. And, and there was some strategy toward getting our staff together. We had Coach Kyle Rohn, who had been a Division I coach for many years, brought that experience. Coach Errol Groff, a local coach, a tremendous number of Louisiana connections. And then now Coach Waterman gives us a broad base of national contacts. So we feel like that we have, I, I truly feel like that I'm blessed and have one of the best staffs in the country. All right, it's now time for the scouting report for this week. And Coach Jay Ladner is going to give us his thoughts on South Southeast Missouri State as the Lions would take on the Red Hawks. Coach Dickie Nuts, the head coach there, they've had a lot of success over the years. Uh, people may, may know Coach Nutt from his brother. His brother is Houston Nutt, former football coach at Ole Miss in Arkansas. And, uh, but he's, he's, and, and he's actually was the former basketball coach at Arkansas State as well. They're going to be a very well coached team, very athletic. Uh, and we'll certainly, that's a very, very tough place to play. We're going to have our hands full uh, going, to, going to Southeast Missouri. So as you can see, a lot going on with Southeastern basketball, not only preparing to win on the court, but also trying to win right there in the classroom as well. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thank you for joining us here on this week's episode of Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladder. We'll see you next week.